No, we are not sharing the link with the students, so absolutely no problem.
been organized by science society
what you are going to take away once you leave the screen do you remember anything or anything has excited you rest are all the names so uh, which you may not even encounter in future but something which will certainly inspire you that yes we had some great people in our country in the past and we should not forget it uh, as uh, your uh, college science uh, your uh, secretary uh, said sushrut and chara so let me begin this is sushrut sahita was written some 600 bce now as i said take oh what is your what is bce so far we were uh, listening to the hearing the word bc before christ then ad and adomini but then it had came away they said no we will replace it with some other word which appears more secular so if you go through the internet you will find another word bce before current common era so now this term is changed by uh, some people now we can call it before common era okay so it is 600 before common era when this uh, father of surgery sushrut uh, he wrote sushrut sahita and uh, these are some of the uh, text uh, which was uh, written now this was not written 500 uh, 600 bce it was written much later to it but it was stored saved preserved it was on palm leaf now these are some of the pictures which you find whenever you refer to sushrut sahita these things are preserved at los angeles county uh, museum of art okay and uh, so this is about sushrut sahita similarly charak sahita Uh, this is about the ayurvedic medicine uh, this was written some 200 bce but the need of medicine through our uh, older scripts it, this was in arthurveda from there it started and it was somehow brought to prominence by maharishi charak then now uh, this these are the fields which is related to medical science which is very medical, much needed uh, but mathematics which was not uh, much needed at that time because our need was food clothing and shelter here comes see madho series now all of you must have studied sin cosine and tangent series ab ye awaaz aa raha hai but you to kya raha hai and uh, you can find the infinite series expansion of all these trigonometric terms So uh, in my school days, I never heard the word Madhava, but it was all uh, sine, yeah. cosine, and tangent. When I started reading more on this, I realized that first, or rather, the historian, scientific historians realized that it was first created by Madhava. Now you can read here an Indian mathematician and astronomer, Madhava of Sangamagrama. 1350 to 1425 the founder of kerala school of astronomy and mathematics now this was in india so long ago and today if we ask school children do they know they are not even interested in trigonometric series because it is mathematics and appears to be complicated but our long long ago our ancestors did this work now this was picked up by the other prominent scientists of the European countries. One was Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz from Germany. You can see here. This gentleman, 1646, a great scientist, to 1716. His his contemporary was Sir Isaac Newton. Now both worked on infinite series, and uh, but the mention of Madhava series. was i have not seen anywhere but it certainly it is there in the even the european libraries and we do have it. but our students need to know this now these two great people scientists discovered calculus at the same time now some facts about their uh, at that time what happened calculus independently both had different notations and when they wrote finally what happened 
Sir Isaac Newton first published his Principia Mathematica and then the calculus theories. Leibniz objected, saying that I was the first who did it and wrote to Sir Isaac Newton. Both had bitter fights. Subsequently, Newton, Sir Isaac Newton became the chair professor. And then he ensured that his work is, uh, remains at the prominent level. Now, we need to know the, there's nothing wrong, we need to know the psychology or the behavior of these great people, not merely the uh, outcome of their work. So I, go, I read both them in the, to quite some time uh, and to quite depth to understand how they spent their later part of their life fighting on the claim of calculus. So that's upon some European scientists, how they are related to Indian work. Now you have seen Madhava's infinite series is related to Leibniz's work. Then if you study at later stage, uh, 1870s, Leonhard Euler, then you will realize he's one of the biggest mathematician who did uh, invented complex number, series, then Gauss, he developed series, but initial of all those was uh, Madhava of India. Now, now, I have a question for you, which we will answer gradually. Uh, this is what is your take home. Whether dry air or wet air is heavy, which one is heavy? Now, uh, I request the organizers to give a chance to any one student to respond to this question. May I request so? Please let any student reply whether dry air or wet air is heavy and why. Yes, somebody please give the answer. Sir has asked a question. Sir, wet hair. Wet air, sorry. Okay, your good name, please. Uh, sir, myself, Hemant Gabni. Okay, okay. Now, uh, please put off the mic. Now, let me answer. Okay. Now, uh, this is a very general perception that wet air is heavy because we try to simulate using, if we take a handkerchief, dry, weigh it, and dry it will find some grass and if you put it in a bucket of water and then take it out, squeeze it and then try to weigh, measure its weight, it will obviously come more than its dry weight. So we say wet uh, handkerchief is heavy. That simulation we extend to air also and say that wet air is heavier than dry air. Now let us see further how it can calculate it or not. Now here see, composition of dry air near sea level. Why sea level? Because there the maximum pressure is exerted by the column of atmosphere. So let's see, the maximum component is of nitrogen, 78%, oxygen, 20.947%, argon, 0.934%. Then carbon dioxide, you can see the value is coming down. And if you see the entire list, the contribution of all other Elements are very, very, very small. So, if we, if we want to have simpler calculation, what we can do is, let's have nitrogen 78%, oxygen 21%, and then close. Rest, we will leave everything. So that we can do simple calculations. Now, molecular weight of nitrogen is 28, oxygen 32. Let us do the fractional weight. So if you take one uh, unit of air, what will be the weight contributed by nitrogen in one unit of dry air? This will be multiplication of these two numbers, that is percentage volume and molecular weight. So multiply these two divide by 100. This comes out to be 21.9. Similarly for oxygen, 6.7, argon, 0.4. Add this will give us the approximate molecular weight of dry air. So all students, please remember the approximate dry air's molecular weight is 28.9.
Now let's go a little ahead. Let's compare what we are trying to answer is what if the air is wet? Wet means we are feeding moisture in it. So here, let's see the same for moisture. Hydrogen, one molecular weight, you, uh, H2, two molecules, two atoms, so it has two. Oxygen, 16 into two. You can see it's molecular weight. Let, let's add it all together. H2O, its molecular weight is 18. Any doubt? I believe there should not be any doubt. Now let's compare dry air is having a molecular rate of 28.9 and dry and H2O moisture is having a molecular rate of 18. Now my question, let's go back to our question. The question is what is the weight, comparative weight of wet and dry air? So in a dry air parcel, imagine a an air parcel of the shape of a balloon. So in the atmosphere, take a balloon, fill it with dry air. So that is a air parcel. And then remove the outer membrane. Assume, imagine that dry air. Inside that dry air parcel, we are feeding moisture. So when we feed moisture, equal